Chapter 4 When he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And he went round about the villages, teaching, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Now one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him, and he went into the Pharisee's house, and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster vial of ointment, and stood at his feet behind him, weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisees which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he saith, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed five hundred denarii, and the other fifty. And when they had nothing to pay, he graciously forgave them both. Which of them therefore will love him most? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman, and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house, thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she hath washed my feet with her tears, and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came in, hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. There came then his brethren and his mother, and standing without, sent unto him, calling him. And the multitude sat about him, and they said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren without seek for thee. And he answered them, saying, Who is my mother and my brethren? And he looked around about on them, which sat about him, and said, Behold, my mother, my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of God, the same is my brother and my sister and mother. In the meantime, when they were gathered together a multitude of many thousands of people, insomuch that they trod one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, first of all, Beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Therefore whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light, and that which ye have whispered in the ear in closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. And they say unto you, my friends, Be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you whom you shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, Fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? And yet none of them is forgotten before God. But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. And one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. But he said unto him, Man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? And he said unto them, Take heed, and beware of all manner of covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there I will bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much good laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up measure for himself, and is not rich toward God. And he said unto his disciples, 
Therefore I say unto you, Be not concerned for your life, what ye shall eat, neither for your body, what ye shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and yet God feedeth them. Of how much more value are ye than the fowls? And which of you, with being concerned, can add to his stature one cubit? If ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why are ye concerned for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not, and yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothe the grass, which is to-day in the field, and to-morrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? And seek not ye what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of a concerned mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. But rather seek ye his kingdom, and these things shall be added unto you also. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom." Sell that ye have, and give alms. Provide yourself bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approacheth, neither moth destroyeth. For where your treasure is, there your heart be also. Let your loins be girded about, and your lamps burning. And ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding feast, and when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately." Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself, and make them to sit down to meet, and will come forth and serve them. And if he shall come in the second watch, or come in the third watch, and find them so, blessed are those servants. And this know, that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would not have suffered his house to be broken into. Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye think not. Then Peter said unto him, Lord, speakest thou this parable unto us, or also unto all? And the Lord said, Who then is the faithful and wise steward, whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household, to give them their portion of meat in due season? Blessed is that servant, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Of a truth I say unto you, that he will make him ruler over all that he hath. But, and if that servant say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to beat the manservants and maidservants, and to eat and drink, and to be drunken, the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him, and at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in sunder. And that servant, which knew his Lord's will, and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. But he that knew not, and did commit things worthy of stripes, shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much, of him they will ask the more. And he said also to the people, When ye see a cloud rise out of the west, straight away ye say, There cometh a shower. And so it is. And when ye see the south wind blow, ye say, There will be a heat, and it cometh to pass. Ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky and of the earth, but how is it ye do not discern this present time? And why even of yourselves judge ye not what is right? While thou goest with thine adversary to the magistrate, as thou art in the way, give diligence that thou mayest be delivered from him, lest he hail thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and the officer cast thee into prison. I tell thee, thou shalt not depart thence, till thou hast paid the very last might. Chapter 5 There were present at that season some that told him of the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answering said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans, because they suffered such things. I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Or those eighteen, upon whom the tower in Siloam fell, and slew them, think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem? 
I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. He spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon, and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and find none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth it the ground? And he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dung it. And if it bear fruit, well. But if not, then thou shalt cut it down. And as he spake, a certain Pharisee besought him to dine with him. And he went in and sat down at meat. And when the Pharisee saw it, he marveled that he had not first washed before dinner. And the Lord said unto him, Now do ye, Pharisee, make clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but your inward part is full of ravening and wickedness. Ye fools, did not he that made that which is without make that which is within also? But give alms of such things as ye have, and behold, all things are clean unto you. But woe unto you, Pharisees, for ye tithe mint and rue and all manner of herbs, and pass over justice and the love of God. These ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. Woe unto you, Pharisees, for ye love the uppermost seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets. Woe unto you, for ye are as graves which are not seen, and the men that walk over them are not aware of them. Then answered one of the lawyers, and said unto him, Master, thus saying, Thou reproachest us also. And he said, Woe unto you also, ye lawyers, for ye laid them with burdens grievous to be borne, and ye yourselves touch not the burdens with one of your fingers. Woe unto you, lawyers, for ye have taken away the key of knowledge. Ye entered not in yourselves, and them that were entering in ye hindered. And as he departed from thence, the scribes and the Pharisees began to urge him vehemently, and to provoke him to speak of many things, laying wait for him, to catch him in some saying. On that same day went Jesus out of the house, and he sat by the seaside. And great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went into a ship and sat. And the whole multitude stood on the shore, and he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sawyer went forth to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places, where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprang up, because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up, and choked them. But other fell unto good ground, and brought forth fruit, some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who has ears to hear? Let him hear. And when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked of him the parable. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When any one heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and snatcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, and at once with joy receiveth it. Yet hath he not root in himself, but endureth for a while. And when tribulations or persecutions ariseth because of the world, he quickly falleth away. And he also that received seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word, and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. But he that received seed unto the good ground is he that heareth the word, and understandeth it. He also beareth fruit, and bringeth forth, some an hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. And he said unto them, Is a lamp brought to be put under a bushel, or under a bed, and not to be set on a lampstand? For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested, Neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come to light. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat, and went his way. And when the blade was sprung up, and brought forth fruit, 
Then appeared the tares also. And the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good wheat in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? And he said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and in the time of harvest I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them into bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he departed from the multitude, and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered them, and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man, the field is the world, the good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of the age. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that cause men to sin, and all them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. There shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasures hid in a field, the which when a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth, and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who, when he had found one pearl of great value, went and sold all that he had, and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea, and gathered fish of every kind, which, when it was full, they drew it to shore, and sat down, and gathered the good into vessels, but cast the bad away. So shall it be at the end of the age. The angels shall come forth, and sever the wicked from among the just." and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Jesus saith unto them, Have ye understood all these things? They say unto him, Yea. Then he said unto them, Therefore every scribe which is instructed concerning the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and old. And he said, So is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed upon the ground and should sleep, and rise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow up, he knoweth not how. The earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear, and when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he putteth in the sickle, because the harvest is come. And he said, Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God, or with what parable shall we describe it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which, when it is sown in the earth, is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. And when it is sown, it groweth up, and becometh greater than all herbs, and shooteth out great branches, so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. And with many such parables spake he the word unto them, and they were able to hear it. And without a parable spake he not unto them. But when they were alone, he expounded all things to his disciples.